Hello, everyone. Welcome to the 2021 Ethereum Bangkok. Uh, we are very happy to have you here uh, one more year. Um, so this is the second year in a row, in a row that uh, we are actually organizing this event. And we have uh, an amazing lineup of speakers uh, this year again. My name is uh, Max Simple. I'm the CMO of Atato. And uh, at Atato, we are uh, organizing the Bangkok Blockchain Meetup every month for the past two years. And uh, we try to be an active member of the Ethereum community in Thailand. So I would like to thank first the Ethereum Foundation, which has been uh, actually supporting us uh, for the past two years for the seventh. And uh, it couldn't happen without them. And again, a la very large lineups. We are going to talk about NFTs. We are going to talk about decentralized finance. We are going to talk about layer two and uh, what's next for Ethereum. So we had an exciting year in 2021. I think it's going to be uh, even better in 2022. And to kickstart the event, uh, we have, I would say, maybe the most popular uh, blockchain company in the Ethereum space. We have uh, Jacob Cantelé from MetaMask. Hi, Jacob. How are you? Hey, Maxime. I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. But thanks for, for joining. Uh, I know you don't do much events, so uh, we are very honored to, to have you uh, with us. It's the second time after the virtual meetup. And this year, actually, we have uh, uh, a lot of people registering for the event, uh, a lot of students, uh, a lot of uh, universities, um, students would actually join, uh, corporates, and also developers. So it's quite large. Uh, so that's why my questions are going to be a, a bit broad at the beginning, but uh, I still think there is some people who don't know who MetaMask is and what do you guys do? So uh, maybe we can start with just a, a short introduction. Yeah, um, so, so hi, I'm, I'm Jacob Campelli. I'm, uh, I'm lead of operations for MetaMask. Um, maybe to, to really truly understand what MetaMask is, uh, I think it's really useful for people to take a step back and understand what Web3 is and, and what the decentralized web actually means for the internet. So growing up, I, I believed in an internet that was going to make society more democratic and free and make information more free and allow people to form communities and startups and just uh, to make society better. And when we got you know web to the the social web and all of these business models started being built uh com companies like facebook uh which i'm gonna rag on really hard tonight because of their um or, or today uh for the for those yes. in, in bangkok uh because of their uh, announcement um uh they they found interesting use cases and had no business model so the business model became surveillance and it became people's most private and intimate lives. And then the incentives were to addict people and manipulate them and to promote um, incendiary content and hatred and all, all the things that we now know those platforms to be associated with. Um, and the, the Web3, it means, you know, we, we get the opportunity to own our own identities, our own data, um, and to, to change how the internet and how the financial system themselves are structured. So MetaMask, we say that our, our mission is to democratize access to the decentralized web. We wanna take everything that's in that decentralized web, make it more accessible to people, create a user experience that's more accessible, um, and, and to make that, um, something that, that billions of people can use, which we're not there yet. Um, we, we want to, through, through that mission, to, to transform the internet and the world economy to one that empowers people. And um, you know, we've, we've started as a, a humble uh, way to, to store your ether, but we allow you to, to connect to decentralized applications to we provide a permission system on top of the internet so you can say like you can do this no you can't do that and you'll see that permission system becoming even more extensive and powerful um, in, in the coming days yeah, well, that's a that's a great wrap up and uh, um, 
you know what it has been quite an evolution right uh i think there is a big milestone that you guys achieved and you just announced like a couple of months ago that you reached uh, 10 million active users which is a big deal right and um i just would like to reflect on uh, on the past let's say two years uh, uh what happened at metamask and, and how do you see uh, the future after this milestone well um so the real number is a lot bigger than 10 million monthly active <laughs> users, but uh, I don't want to ruin another announcement that's going to happen later. Okay. So, uh, I, I won't say the number, but um, you know, I, I think <clears throat> it's really it's really extraordinary because of how um, how diverse and distributed the the demographics of the people using MetaMask are, how how diverse they are in terms of their use cases and how they're using MetaMask, which is which is radically different um, across um, you know across across every category. Um, can you expand? On, can you expand on this? Uh, what yeah. Are the, the... Yeah. So, like, it's really it's really interesting. So, like, I remember a lot of wallets that were were coming around like in the 2019 and 2020 period, and they all wanted to target this or that use case. Like they wanted to target gaming or they wanted to target DeFi or something like that. And so they, they thought that they would build these, these integrations and just build a wallet that just does that. And what happened is when people started building those use cases, the, the dApps and the sites that people actually wanted to use weren't integrated yet. And so for, for us in MetaMask, our approach was always to support the whole decentralized web through permissionless um, APIs and, and making things more decentralized, making them em empowering the developers to build you know, whatever they could dream. And so we, we had, it's crazy, like 2019 saw this big boom, this initial boom of DAOs, and then a boom of NFTs right around the end of the year. And then there was a big uh, a boom of, um, of of DeFi DeFi, DeFi sites, yeah. and you know DeFi summer. And then supposedly DeFi summer ended, and then there was another DeFi summer. <laughs> and we just see these like these waves of of different use cases and. Um, I'll say I'll say more about it now, but we're seeing this huge explosion of gaming um, now, and we're also seeing a, a huge huge growth of of DeFi and NFTs all at the same time now. So the 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 most recent boom is like the most diversified I've ever I've ever seen. And and just to uh, to come back on that point, obviously we hear even in the news that gaming and NFTs are growing at a, at a excessively mm. high rate, right? Uh, how do you compare compare that compared to the the DeFi summer that we have seen last year? Is it kind of the same enthusiasm? So, so it's interesting. Um, the number of users of art-based NFTs um, are a little bit less than. Uh, than we would expect from what we see like in conversation. So like we, have, we try to cl classify sites um, into use cases and then to measure the growth of those use cases. It, that we only do that if the user has opted into analytics, by the way. So um, those people who don't, we have, we have no visibility into it. Um, and we also don't associate particular sites with particular users. We don't know your accounts. We don't know your balances. Um, we, we do not collect that kind of information, but um, so, so in terms of, so in terms of, um, in, in terms of games though, the, the number of users and the level of activity is unprecedented. It's, it's the biggest boom probably we, we've ever seen. And also the fastest, uh, the fastest boom we've ever seen, um, the the NFT growth is also very real, but it's the, I mean like art NFTs, but the art NFT use cases are um, they they don't have anywhere near the amount of real world users. Um, and 
I, I can say more about um, about locations and stuff too, uh, you know, or de demographics if you want to talk about that. Yes, sure, please, please do because um, just on the Thailand perspective, you know, we are we are based in Thailand and and we are seeing the growth of the yeah. Ethereum ecosystem. Uh, I remember when we were doing some educations like one year ago, people had no idea about MetaMask, how it works. And yeah. it seems like new people coming in the space figure this out much quicker. So um, I wanted to see if it was maybe a Thailand thing, or I would say Southeast Asian thing, or if you see the, the, the same thing all around the world. Yeah, so, um, so our top country now is the Philippines. Um, and, and that's been sustained for, for a while. Uh, it's it's a it's almost even with the United States. It's it's um, <laughs> you know the the United States is number two, and then uh, we have a lot of different Asian countries um, and and some African countries. So like especially what? Vietnam, uh, Nigeria, India, um, Indonesia. Th those have been those have seen huge booms. Um, Thailand is also growing significantly. It's it's not quite in the same um, like it's on the top five, but. And uh, who is number one? The the Philippines. And the Philippines. Okay. Wow. It's a, it's an interesting fact. Thanks for that. For that. And yeah. uh, it's it's also a, a part where actually the the gaming is actually booming as well. Yeah. Yeah. I I'm I'm personally a gamer, so I'm I'm a little biased in the sense that I really want to see blockchain gaming succeed, but also it's it's succeeding. So uh, it's it's super exciting. All right, and um, so we have seen like a DeFi, uh, NFT. Uh, I just would like to to, um, to talk about MetaMask Institutional. Uh, I mean, yeah. you, you guys have been launching that. How is it different? How does it work? Is it targeted to cooperation, obviously? But can you explain more about what it is and, and, and what's the target? Yeah, so so MetaMask Institutional is, is really essentially the same product um, as MetaMask, but it, it replaces well, it, it's targeted at allowing people who have uh, more complex compliance obligations to still be able to access the decentralized web and to be able to join DeFi. So um, it, it allows, you know, like a, a crypto institution or VC or something like that to, uh, to, to be able to participate in DeFi platforms um, to be able to use the MetaMask APIs. It, the way that it works, like if you were using it, it removes the hardware wallets menu and it replaces that hardware wallets menu with a, a series of other custody options. So like people who are using a, uh, a custodian, like a um, an, an institutional custodian, um, the product itself, we, we'd also like to open up for organizations that are, that are trying to do um, uh, that, that are trying to do like multi-sig type situations. So, um, you know, we're going to use it to spearhead, like, like we'd love to, to, to be able to support Gnosis safes, for example, and to ultimately make that available to all MetaMask users. So like you could use a Gnosis safe together with your MetaMask to, uh, you know, allow a series of stakeholders to approve transactions. All right, which, and, which is really powerful for like DAOs, and you know we're seeing DAOs you know manage their business in a totally online way. All right, and so basically, any any businesses can sign up on MetaMask Institutional, or you, you need any requirements? Um, yeah, so we're we're still in beta, um, and we're we're still building out a number of things. Uh, we're we're very close though, and and we are taking some beta clients. So if if you're interested in that, uh, get in touch with us. Okay, uh, well, do I, I just rebound on, on the Philippines side because we had a question in the Q and A. We said that when you said that Philippines is number one, what kind of statistics? Number of wallet, number of transactions, or just amount of? Uh, can you expand on this part? Yeah, so that's um, the number of monthly active users. Uh, we, so we 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 both um, uh, we have uh, a category for monthly active users. Uh, we we're also uh, starting to measure some other uh, other things in the pipeline. So like the number of users who send transactions per month. Uh, we'll, we'll have uh, we'll have some interesting dashboards I think on this um, in the future. We're we're really interested in making some of the data public 
eventually. Okay, well, thanks for that, Anna. So now we are going back to uh, one question that we hear every single time we talk about Ethereum from DeFi users mostly. It's about the gas fees, right? And it has been a huge topic uh, for not only for MetaMask, but for a lot of person. Um, I, I know you guys uh, may actually implement layer two um, to actually try to answer these questions. Can you expand on what are the, the steps that MetaMask is taking to, uh, to help on these high gas fees? Yeah, so we really believe in a multi-chain future. Um, we, we think Ethereum is, is um, foundational in that multi-chain future, but uh, that, that there's gonna be a lot of really important chains for, for different purposes and, and use cases. Uh, we have last year, or that's not, that's not true, excuse me, in, in April of this year, uh, we launched something that we call the Custom Network API, which allowed sites to suggest um, additional additional blockchains to users. So whether that's that's Polygon or Arbitrum or, or any of the other chains, uh, the site can then uh, can then suggest those to the user. Our, our approach has always been to uh, not to force specific networks or specific L2s and scaling solutions. And we, we think that there's gonna be dozens or eventually even hundreds of L2s of um, side chains and so, so we don't have, um, at least for now, we haven't, um, we haven't just like forced all of these different networks on the users. And there's a couple of reasons for that that um, people sometimes don't know. But uh, when you use a network that has a, a third party RPC endpoint, you're retrieving data from, from a server, from the nodes on that network. And whoever operates that server, which is not us, uh, gets information on your account list and balances and, and things like that. And so like, we're just not like, you know, our, our number one priority is protecting the privacy and security of our users. And we're just not going to, in a non-consensual way, like force hundreds of networks on people. And those other wallets, which are doing that are actually leaking a lot of your private information to a lot of unknown third parties without you knowing it. So like if, if you use a, if you use any wallet that has like Binance Smart Chain in it, for example, you're you're leaking your account list to the to the Binance organization and all of your 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 balances. So we there's also a performance implications. Like if you have hundreds of networks, your, your wallet's gonna go slower. So we've been a little bit more conservative um, in terms of just adding these other networks. But we're going to look at things like giving people the option to uh, to add those networks uh, during onboarding, um, giving people the the option to, or giving developers the ability to pass through specific networks that the DAP uses uh, when when the DAP onboards the, the customer into MetaMask. Uh, so we'll we'll do a lot of things that are going to greatly improve this, and as we support more L2s. I think people are going to see huge reductions in gas fees. Um, we're we're greatly improving um, the the logic for for a number of different L twos. So like all of the different layer twos have uh, you know different gas estimation methods and mechanisms, and we've been doing a lot of work this year in supporting those and creating really great user experiences on the L twos. Um, we're, we're also rolling out a dynamic token detection feature that can automatically detect um, additional tokens that I can talk about more. Uh, but that feature is gonna become multi-chain and allow the user to, um, to, to see their, their tokens across every chain. So uh, let, let me rebound on, on two things first uh, here because sure. it's very interesting what you are saying on the, um, Basically, what you're explaining is that other wallets with much more chains are actually compromising some of the security features, right? Yeah, they're, they're bleeding some, some private customer data. So like, for example, if you run an RPC endpoint and uh, like, like, let's say, you know, I, I have a RPC endpoint for um, connecting to, we'll just call it like XYZ chain. 
um, my my RPC endpoint can you know the the wallet is querying to find your balance on um, all the accounts in your wallet. So the person who runs the RPC endpoint for that chain gets to see the balances in the accounts, and prospectively they can also see the IP address of um, of, of the user. So the people who run those endpoints are you know, they, they can theoretically identify those cost, the IP addresses of people with large balances. Good. And if like, let's say the RPC endpoint for a particular network gets hacked by a, by a bad actor, or maybe the original creator was a bad actor, they could do things like, you know, identify users who have the largest balances and then try to target them in, in ways that are really not good. And so uh, we, we want to, we have a more conservative approach and a more decentralized approach than other wallets because we are we want to protect the long term of this ecosystem. We want to protect people's privacy and security, and that's our number one priority. Okay, clear. And uh, thanks for that. And uh, my other question is a bit related to what you mentioned, but um, about decentralized finance, DeFi today, MetaMask is the gateway to DeFi, right? Uh, for most of the people. Um, I mean, people using DeFi are probably using MetaMask today. Um, what are the features related to decentralized finance that you have today, and what do you plan for the for the to roll out maybe in the next few months or in two thousand twenty two? Can you expand on this? Yeah, well, so MetaMask APIs can interact with pretty much any DeFi app. So um, those. Uh, those will those allow you to interact with the whole decentralized web, use any, any DeFi product. Uh, we do also offer some, some in-wallet features to make DeFi easier to use. So uh, we have a meta aggregator, which is that, that button you see in MetaMask called swap. Uh, when you use that feature, we are searching, um, we're searching not only every decentralized exchange, but we're also searching every decentralized exchange aggregator because each of the aggregators has a different method and algorithm for how it splits the customer's order across all of the different decentralized exchanges. So by searching all of those, we're able to get you the, the cheapest gas route, um, the, the best prices. And so we, we calculate all of that and try to, try to get the, the absolute best price for the customer. Um, we, we rolled that out um, at the end of last year. Uh, we don't have any other um, announcements of, of that type right now, um, but but certainly you know I think we'll we'll add other things to make uh, to to make the decentralized web easier to use in the future. No, thanks. Yes, and um, for people who are not really familiar with it. Uh, um, so when you have a MetaMask, the gas price, you can basically choose uh, depending on the speed of the transaction. So uh, MetaMask has all you to, uh, to have a customized uh, gas price, right? Yeah. Um, so, I'll also, you know, I'll just say on gas prices, like I, I know we have a lot of people and so some people may not that be that familiar with gas. So I'll just take a step back and say like ga gas prices are the fees that, that pay the miners who operate a network. Or, or on a proof of stake chain, it pays the validators who run the network. Those gas fees are not paid to MetaMask. Those, um, we, we actually oh, get a it's lot of, I get a, a crazy number of messages that are like, you're robbing us on these gas fees. Like, and, and they think that like MetaMask are like these like gas gods that like got rich. We don't get anything from gas fees. Like it doesn't go to us. Um, but we are working to enable layer two chains that are going to greatly reduce those gas costs. And um, we're, we're also working on, uh, people may have heard of this, we're also working on a plugin system that will be able to support non-EVM compatible networks um, like, like ZK rollups, which, which are not, you, you currently can't um, use ZK rollups in, in many wallets. Uh, but this plugin system is going to allow people to, to add other chains like that and or, or uh, Bitcoin or, or any other any other blockchain. So you, you would be supporting Bitcoin on MetaMask soon? 
Uh, well, through the plugin system, yeah. Ah, okay. All right. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, or, that. Through, through the snaps. Uh, it's it's called MetaMask snaps. It, it's not uh, it's not actually a plugin system. I should uh, describe it that way. But uh, through through MetaMask snaps, it it allows you to to add additional blockchains. All right, and um, there, there is a lot of questions in the chat relating to the latest Facebook announcement. I know you you mentioned it at the beginning uh, of the sessions. Uh, what and sorry, it's not exactly related, but it's the news of the day, right? So where do you see them actually fitting in? in the whole blockchain space in general and uh, what's your take on it, if you want. Sorry, uh, could, could you repeat the question? So we had this Facebook announcement about the Meta, uh, Meta, right? Cool. Oh, 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 I see. And uh, yes, we have a lot of questions on the chat related to that. Just would like to have your take on it. I know you, you mentioned it at the beginning, but. Uh... Yeah, well, so Facebook is not Meta. Facebook is one company. And I, I think it's super weird to to like to see the decentralized web and this concept of a metaverse being created and to think about that concept and say, like, that's me. I'm I'm the whole thing. Um, I like th that's not, not how I view the Internet and, and not, um, you know, not not really uh, not really inspiring to me. Uh, yes, I, I can imagine. <laughs> I, you know, so I, I think it's, um, you know, that, that business has, uh, has a, a surveillance and, and ad based model, uh, that's really deep in its DNA. And I think that in web three, we can build something that's much better. Great. And, um, so last questions, uh, for today, I would say broader. Uh, it's the Ethereum event, right? In 2020, we saw the rise of DeFi, NFT, uh, 2021, and gaming, as you mentioned. Yeah. What do you see as the next big, big step for Ethereum in 2022? And what's the big step for MetaMask? Yeah, so we're seeing this huge growth of gaming. I am, so uh, actually, before I, um, I, I got on this call, I... Uh, spend some time with some teammates. We're, we're playing a bunch of different games. Um, and, uh, you know, we're, we're just, we're working really hard on creating better user experiences for the, for the gaming, both for the game developers, but also for the, the game players. Um, and so I, I think that that growth is going to continue. Um, and I think there's this opportunity for, young people to, to gain access to the decentralized web through gaming. And then from there to discover all kinds of things like, like DeFi and, and to have, uh, to, to develop ownership in the platforms that they use. And this is such a huge transformation of the economy. And those people who have been locked out of the financial system for decades, there's su suddenly they gain access to, to all of DeFi and a whole world of, of economic freedom that they never would have had access to before. And uh, that's that's super exciting to me. All right. And the last question is on the chat. Uh, I will reply. I know MetaMask is owned by consensus, but someone asked any plan for MetaMask DAO in the future? Um, so we don't have anything to announce there, but um, I'll just say, like personally, like I would love to see a MetaMask DAO, um, and our our goal and orientation is for MetaMask to be more community owned over time, and to find ways to do that that don't um, you know that that are are legally viable for us. Uh, so you know that that's that's the tension is figuring out how to, how to do that. The right way. All right. All right. Uh, we arrive uh, right on time at the end of the session. Um, Jacob, I really personally would like to thank you so much for, for joining us. Uh, I mean, I know you don't do that much of events, so we really appreciate you taking the time uh, to join us. Um, we hey, we passed some link on MetaMask and, and how to use it in the chat for everyone who is not really familiar with the product. Um, it's very easy to use, just need to install it. You will have a, a whole gateway of access to DeFi, NFTs, and basically all the web tree. Um, thanks again, Jacob, uh, for your time. Uh, hope to see you uh, uh, one day in the US and not uh, through Zoom. 
And um, yes, for the next session, it's going to start in 10 minutes uh, with Kaleido and uh, Baker McKinsey. So uh, we'll have a short break to set this up and uh, we'll see you in, in five, 10 minutes. Thanks a lot, Jacob, again. And uh, see, you so see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.